I just thought that we could maybe cover for most people, they're generally unaware of, unaware of the ancient Ohio timeline. Sure. The yeah. various cultures of people that have lived in Ohio. I'm there with you. Yeah, let's All see right. this. So why, I, I thought maybe we would start at the bottom and work our way up instead of from the oldest to the newest, um, just so that when we end up at the oldest, we can talk about how that links back into what Graham was saying, uh, about, you know, in ancient apocalypse. But um, the most recent sort of time period that historians and archaeologists have pieced together is from about 1600 to 1673. They call that the proto-historic era. It's about the era that Europeans started to arrive in this area. And so whoever was living here, they call those sort of before the, the modern day tribal people, right? Okay. Just slightly before that. Okay. And then from about 1100 to 1600, the, the immediate time frame before that proto-historic era, that's the where the archaeologists call the Fort Ancient Era. Okay. And particularly in southern Ohio, these people uh, had a particular life way, different things that they would do, how they buried their dead was different, how they, you know, what, what they were eating, how they were growing their food, uh, you know, what what kind of villages they were building. They okay. had a particular life way, and they call that the Fort Ancient People. It has nothing to do with Fort Ancient, the earthwork. Yeah, so that's always confusing <laughs> Very to confusing. me. Because we stopped at Fort Ancient on the way back. Fort from, Ancient yeah. was built by an <clears throat> earlier people about a thousand years before the Fort Ancient. Uh, but they found remnants of this culture living inside of Fort Ancient's earthwork. And so they became... This is, a, this is a terrible practice that archaeologists do. They name the culture after the property or the property owner. Adina was a guy, right? No, no. no. I, I, Adina, I'll get to Adina okay. in a second. But um, so Fort Ancient, the earthwork had already been named that by early settlers. That name got attached to this group of people and their lifeways because they found a, a, a you know, kind of a... Uh, a village site, so to speak, inside of the earthwork walls. Okay. All right. Um, so it becomes very confusing for the public. Um, before that, from about 600 CE or AD, as some people think, uh, to about 1000 AD, there was a group of people here in Ohio that were known as the intrusive burial mound culture. And there's not been a lot that's known uh, about this group of people. <clears throat> other than that they used to bury their dead into mounds that had already been built by earlier cultures. Okay. And they're like, hey, we're going to use Intrusive this Intrusive burial. Right. Yeah, so sure. they're going to bury their, you know, they're probably descended from those peoples. And so they, you know, there's a bit of ancestor, you know, veneration going on yeah. uh, kind of thing. Maybe family burial plots or, you know, who knows what. Sure. So that, that's that, group, that period of time. Prior to them, before the Intrusive Burial Mound culture, uh, from about 100 B.C. Uh, to about 500 A.D. That's the period of time that archaeologists have identified as the Hopewell people, or uh, they, they're they also now kind of trying to get away from that nomenclature, uh, and they're calling this part the Woodland period, okay. more generic term, because uh, they... <coughs> Archaeologists have finally realized how problematic their naming convention has been. <laughs> uh, and, you know, identifying a group of people as the Hopewell, for instance, that's named after the farm in which there was a series of mounds that were excavated. And the guy that owned the farm that's right. was Mordecai C. Hopewell, a former Confederate war soldier. And so they've labeled this whole you know, major culture uh, with, after you know, a farmer. after some Confederate, you know, soldier, <laughs> Mordecai Hopewell, <laughs> you know, it's like ridiculous, right? And so That's bizarre. And so, you know, they're trying to move away from that nomenclature and, good, they're, you good. know, now it's called the woodland period, more generic. And so there's an early, middle and late woodland period. And so, um, okay. you know, uh, it's it's problematic for the Hopewell Culture National Historic Park, mm -hmm. you know, in Chilcothy, run by the National Park Service, because because they understand they now they know 
the history of how that name came about, right? Um, those earthworks, the Hopewell earthworks specifically, were excavated during, uh, they were excavated for the Chicago World's Fair in 1893. Really? Uh, in the lead up up to that, um, they paid for all the excavations and all those artifacts from that site. They collected about 400,000 artifacts, Whoa. went on display during the Chicago World's Fair, and that became known as Hopewell's Site, and then that got shortened to Hopewell's, it's the Hopewell's people, and, you know, it was, uh, it was kind of a big deal. You know? That's wild. Um, if you want to go see any of those artifacts, some of those artifacts, a selection of the more amazing ones, are on display at the Chicago Field Museum. That's in Chicago, a great museum. because there a long that time museum ago. was the uh, sort of outcome of the, the Chicago World World's Fair. Okay, okay. Everything that went on display, uh, you know, for the Chicago World's Fair, be- got incorporated into the Chicago. Oh, museum. cool. All right. So. Now, is that the one that you walk up and it's just a, a blank, giant field? There's actually no earthworks. Well, yeah, sort in of. It, there's, there's there's a plaque <laughs> where it shows where they used to be. Yeah, there's but very when, little remnant of. I've what's gone there. out there. I'm like, there's yeah. nothing here. Well, if you go up and hike the the hiking trail up onto the ridge that kind of overlooks that big field, yeah, some of the earthen walls that are up there are still relatively intact. Yeah, because they weren't farmed over down below. But that was a big site. It is enormous. Huge. It's absolutely enormous. Uh, just gigantic. Like half site. moon hedges, and that's where the and- largest. Hopewellian earthwork mound, uh, it, you know, was excavated. Um, and it's been okay. excavated repeatedly. The, you know, uh, Warren K. Moorhead, on behalf of the Chicago, uh, you know, World's Fair, excavated. In fact, Putnam was hired by the Chicago World's Fair to organize all the <laughs> excavations, and he hired Moorhead to do those excavations. So Putnam was involved in those excavations. Um, he also sent archaeologists all across North America and South America, and they did excavations all over the place, and all of that stuff went on display at the Chicago World's Fair. Wow. Gosh, can you yeah. imagine seeing that? Yeah, so... Um, and uh, so before the Hopewell, the immediate period before them, from about 1200 B.C. to about 100 uh, A.D., there's a little bit of overlap between the two. Uh, that's the Adena era, the Adena people. They're named after a mansion. <laughs> right, in Chilcoffee. So there was a mound on a property uh, that was named by one of the early governors of Ohio, Thomas Worthington, in Chillicothe. Worthington, he built Ohio. a mansion there. He named his mansion Adena. This mound was on the Adena property. They wanted to level the mound in the early 1900s to do some farming there. And so the Ohio uh, Historical Society uh, went in there and excavated it, and it became known as the Adena Mound. And that became that then became associated with the culture of people that built those. Hmm. So that is the Adena culture named after the mansion. Yeah, this is terrible nomenclature. Yeah. Like yeah. brutal. <laughs> like just ridiculous. Just bad. <laughs> yeah. I think that would have corrected itself over a hundred years. Yeah. Like, ah, what just, do you want to call it today? Uh, how year. about Doritos? <laughs> yeah, the Dorito culture. Like right, right. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Right. So prior to that. That's before the Woodland period. Okay. Um, there's an immense amount of time from 8,000 B.C. to 1,000 B.C. That's known as the Archaic Era. And you can sometimes find subdivisions in there, early, middle, and late Archaic. Uh, once you get into the late Archaic, there's a kind of a, an interesting, what you might call a proto-culture, what they call the Glacial Came people that not much is known about them other than they used to bury their dead into geologic features known as glacial canes. Okay. So the glaciers came into Ohio, and when they retreated, they left these giant piles of gravel, essentially. Yeah. And those are called glacial canes. And for whatever reason, these people would de- bury their dead into them. They would cover them with red ochre sometimes. Um, there was some ceremonialism there. They appear to be like the early forerunners of... The Adena. Um, so you're seeing like sort of the beginnings of how they kind of came about. Gotcha. And um, so before 8000 BC, going as far back in time as you want, um, probably at least to 18,000 BC, that 
is the Paleolithic era. And uh, that is where you get into what Graham is talking about. I was just right? going to say, yeah. So once you get into, you know, the uh, Younger Dryas yep. is in this period of time. And before that, you have, you know, the last glacial maximum, uh, which, you know, extended almost to Serpent Mound, but not quite. That's wild. Okay. So that glacier came down and stopped just to the north of Fort Hill, which is about five miles north of Serpent Mound in air distance. Okay, so that glacier stopped. And I, I've told this story, I used to tell the story when we used to take people uh, on tours of the crater for Geology Day. People always ask the question, well, were there people here back then? <clears throat> well, yeah. Yeah, there are archaeological sites that date back to the Paleolithic here in Ohio. In fact, there is one in Adams County, one of the largest Paleolithic sites east of the Mississippi River. It's right along the Ohio River, down on Ohio State Route 52, down there. There used to be a historical marker. I think it got stolen a couple years ago. Uh, it's known as the Sandy Springs Archaeological District. Okay. And back in the 70s, uh, people were finding paleolithic artifacts in these farm fields down there along the ohio river and they went down there at the ohio historical society did a shovel test in which they did this big area of basically digging just barely into the ground and see if they could find artifacts and they found tons, tons of, of paleolithic and archaic era stuff down there it's where brush creek empties mm. into the ohio river these fields down at the mouth of the of brush creek well, you take Brush Creek, you just go all the way up to Serpent Mound, and, you've, and you know, Putnam, when he excavated at Serpent Mound after Harvard acquired the property, there are artifacts that date back to the Paleolithic in the collection that, Harv at, that Putnam excavated. So we know that people from the Paleolithic were there. Right. Right? At Serpent Mound. Right. Whether and we're not saying Serpent Mound was built there at that time, right? But people were there. People, people were, were there. leaving that. Right. Could have been fact, a basic every ceremonial single spot. Single one of these cultures going all the way back to the Paleolithic left artifacts at Serpent Mound. Putnam collected from every single one of these cultures. So that was discussion that Graham and I had prior to America before. Was Serpent Mound is way way older than as an archaeological site than what people are crediting it for. Um, it dates all the way back to the Paleolithic. Even if the mound itself wasn't there, there Correct. was ceremony, there was something special. People were living there. People right. were there. And so it was the impact crater? Well, and... so hmm. people coming up from the south, from that Paleolithic site on the, on the Ohio River, if you're coming up from the south, you would reach the southern rim of the crater just if you're following Brush Creek, just south of Serpent Man. Serpent Man is in the southwest section of the crater. You can stand on the rim of the crater, see Serpent Man down there. From that southern rim, you can also see Fort Hill in the distance, five miles to the north of Serpent Mound. And right there, just the, to the north of Fort Hill, was where the glacier stopped. Right. Mm. So if you were from a person from yeah. the Paleolithic and you got to the crater, you would stand there, you'd see this giant circle in the ground, and then beyond that, just ice. Two miles of ice going up wow, into the sky. Oh dude. Okay. What? It was Serpent, still there. Serpent no, no, I'm Mound. That much ice that tall? Yeah. <clears throat> Serpent Mound and that crater was literally the last place on earth that you incredible. could go going north in Ohio at one point, right? So, so of course there were sites there. Possibly. They're I making mean, it all the way up. Oh, we're good. Let's settle here. Well, you can't go any further. Go yeah. Any yeah, exactly. Right. So I always try to invoke that imagery for people to understand that the environment has changed dramatically over the course of this human history that we can document right uh it's changed repeatedly you had the major catastrophe during the younger dryas the worldwide catastrophe that affected these people right but that's not talked about in the archaeological literature nobody identifies these sorts of big ideas yeah graham does graham yeah you know kind of understands that but it's not really discussed 
much in the archaeological literature. Right. Uh, you know, the fauna, the, th- the animals that people were hunting were wildly different, right? Most of those big, giant animals right. are extinct. The megafauna. The fauna megafauna. All died you off. You know, what people were eating, Woolly what people rhinos. were doing, what, what kind of rocks they were, you know, building for their tools and stuff. All that's different. And that's thousands and thousands and thousands of years before you get to the woodland period. Right. 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 right? So this is a period of human history that we know that barest, tiniest fraction of. Remember, this is these are people just like you and me, same IQ bandwidth as you and me. They're modern, They're modern anatomical humans, humans yeah. modern humans. We don't know the tiniest fraction of our own history. That's-